This cycleway crosses an international border right here. Thanks to this fast route alongside an old railway line, you can easily cycle from the Netherlands to Cleves in Germany. The route took me from the station of Nijmegen in the Netherlands to the station of Cleves in Germany. Although the official route starts south of Nijmegen and stops in the outskirts of Cleves. From this starting point in the woods, you can cycle via Groesbeek in the Netherlands, across the border into Germany and then past the former railway stations of Granenburg and Nüttaden to the University of Applied Sciences in Cleves, where an old rail carriage became a cafe. The last 11 kilometers into Cleves were opened in June 2019. The railway line from Nijmegen to Cleves was opened in 1865 and discontinued in 1991. The line was initially an important international connection from Amsterdam to Cologne, but after the Second World War, it became a regional line. In the end, only one track remained, but for decades the line had a double track. The cycle route has been constructed next to the remaining track at the location of that second track. This means the line could be reopened in future, as some locals would like to see happen. That may seem difficult for the Dutch part, because it is largely overgrown. However, from Groesbeek all the way to Cleves, the track is still used. Not by trains, but by railway bikes that you can rent in the summer. They are called Dreisine in Germany, as mentioned on warning signs at every crossing. In the Netherlands they are apparently called Fietslorry. These cycle lorries seem like great fun for families and even larger groups. The Dutch part of the cycle route was finished years before the German part, and that has an unusual consequence. At barely two meters, the Dutch part is much narrower than the German part. That is well over two meters. Where the route has an asphalt surface, it is even more than three meters wide. When it comes to priority on the crossings, the route is messy. All crossings are different. Even in the Netherlands you must often yield. Smaller intersections do give priority to the cycle route, even in Germany. Although the default there seems to be a stop sign. Also annoying were all the stop lights in Germany. At least that was my initial thought. I had to stop and press the awkwardly placed buttons over and over. But then I noticed that the lights turned suspiciously quickly and that the lights responded to cyclists. Indeed, when I reduced my speed, the infrared sensors had time to detect me. And changed the lights to green before I even reached them. State of the art for Germany. Intersections with major roads were often great separated. And they had been nicely decorated in honor of the route. The path may only be used by cyclists. In the Netherlands, as well as in Germany, signs forbid mopeds. In Germany, the route is partly lit at night, but with fixtures that disturb wildlife as little as possible. The route is well connected to the recreational network on both sides of the border, but it is strange that there are no signs to Cleves in the Netherlands or to Nijmegen from Germany. Benches and more extensive resting areas can be found along the route, as well as a vending machine for replacement tires the route is very pleasant, but to make it even easier for myself, I cycled on my own bike this time, that I had taken with me on the train to Nijmegen. Incidentally, this is how the camera is mounted on my handlebars. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to click the notification bell to receive updates on my latest videos.